it seemed like there was a lot of energy in, in that building last night. It seemed like a, almost a tournament feel. Yeah, I think there, uh, you know, it's kind of a frustrated energy in the first half. The Terps appear to be a little bit tight, and, uh, you know, they do have a lot of young guys, and uh, it took them a little while to find their stride. Also, Jason, you know, this time of the year, I don't think you ever want to play a game like that when you're, you've been off for six days, mm-hmm. um, you know, because you've found a certain rhythm to the season, and uh, nobody wants to practice, you know, five consecutive days either. Uh, at this time of the year. So I thought they, would, they appeared a little bit, uh, rusty is not the right word, but just a little out of sync to start the game. Yeah, it looked like they were du- Purdue was doubling Bruno and even Smith early in the game, and it didn't look like Maryland handled it very well. Well, uh, and that doesn't make any sense either because you, now we see it all the time. Uh, Bruno gets so much attention. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you know, they, they had opportunities around the basket. They missed easy uh, open three-point looks. Um, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing when shots are going in and when they're not going in and Maryland got, I think, I think Jalen Smith, JP had five shots in the first 90 seconds of the game yes. and a bunch of them were uh, open looks. He just couldn't get them to go down. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I think he struggles a little bit with nerves to start the games. It takes him a while to find, uh, find a stride. I was shocked by, you know, it was, it was two totally different games, you know, first half Purdue handled, uh, the turp the end by Klein to, to push him to eight. Um, but the second half, 40 to 18, you probably know this, Purdue was six for 36 from the floor in the second half, which yeah, is shocking to me. Shocking. And especially when you consider they've got one of the, you know, preeminent scorers in college basketball, Carson Edwards, um, who who never saw a shot he didn't take or wouldn't <laughs> take and didn't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, and they're a talented offensive team. You know, one of the reasons why it's such a good win uh, you know, I mean, it's obviously it's a Big Ten win against a team that's above you in the or that was above you in the standings. Is that you know Purdue came in on a heater. Uh, they they were as hot as anybody's in, in the country, and one of the reasons for that is because they had been scoring so easily. Um, so when you hold a team like that to 18 points in the second half, uh, obviously you've done some, some some things well, and that's with a really sort of a below par rebounding effort from Maryland. You know, Maryland has just dominated everybody on the backboards and. There were stretches of the game where they just couldn't seem to get a defensive rebound, um, so they still were able to survive uh, because you know because the, the defense they played. You know, it's a big win for a lot of reasons. You know, I, I think sometimes we just assume when teams get off to a good start like Maryland, well, they're good, they're ready, they're they're good for the tournament. But you know, we've seen swoons here in the conference play. You know, in the last ten games in the last few years, it's happened. So just to lock up each one of these wins is crucial, especially when you got. You what? You got two uh, ranked, three, I guess, ranked games coming up, right? In your next six, you play Michigan twice. We all know Turge's record on the road. Which can you explain that? What is that against ranked opponents? <laughs> I mean, what is that? Can I explain it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What is I that? Mean, it, I mean, it's tough, man. It's it's um, you know these are these are these are pretty difficult environments. Uh, Ab, I got to tell you. Playing on the road in the Big Ten, and I, I'm not making. I'm not saying it's really, easy. But, I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, but, I know. It's cool. One of the cool things about the Big Ten, as opposed to the ACC, and I know there there are a lot of folks that romanticize our time in the ACC. But you know, when we would go to play Clemson on a Tuesday night or Florida State mm-hmm. on a Thursday night at nine, there was no, there was never anybody in the building. Yet, yet when we go to play at Lincoln or mm-hmm. in Champaign or Madison, these are events in these towns, and they, they, they pack the place. Penn State's really the only place that doesn't get any anybody, you know, coming to the game. So the, the environment's pretty difficult. And obviously that, that number has to change, and, and um, I, nobody's working harder to do that than, uh, sure. than Turge is. I'm but, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but back to the win. You know, I mean, it's it, this is you, know, you still got to – there are five freshmen in the rotation for Maryland, a couple of sophomores as well. They're, they've gotten dramatically better. If For anybody who saw the first game against Purdue, it's, you know, they're, they're light years away from where they were in December. And you know, the, arc, the arc of the season is one that you, you have to appreciate right now. Well, and then getting back to that, um, is Maryland like the second youngest team in the country or fifth youngest team? Some, Se- second. Second youngest team. And somebody asked me about the game before, you know, on, on like Monday. They said, who do you like in the game? I mean, Purdue's one eight straight. I said, yeah, but you know what? If I'm Purdue and I've won eight straight, obviously they're on a roll, but I do not want to go to Maryland. You know, it's it's basically, you know, it's, it's like a national TV type of game, type of feel. That 
that environment always gets you. I mean, it's tough to go to Maryland and win. They've only lost one there, and that was UVA, and that was pretty tight. I just, I just never feel comfortable, especially if you're the favorite. I never feel comfortable um, taking a team, especially if they are the favorite, going into College Park. It's just a tough place to play. I'll tell you another thing that sort of factors into that, too, and I know you, you probably didn't look into this, but Purdue, you know, because, of, because of the unbalanced schedules now where – you don't play home and home anymore like we, you know, you used to do when the leagues were smaller. Mm-hmm. You know that every year somebody's got a real favorable schedule uh, for themselves, and uh, it's it's the computer. It's it's not a conspiracy. It just happens like that sometimes. And Purdue plays nobody after that game last night. They mm. they have a real cupcake kind of kind of schedule, and good for them. I'm not hating. I'm just saying that's just the way it, it worked out. And uh, so psychologically, I think Purdue Purdue's guys know going in there that. You know, we can afford – we can give one away here. And I, I'm not saying they gave one away. I'm just saying that psychologically you don't come in with the edge that you need to do it because you've got – you know, you've got a handful of games looking at you here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, many of them are at home. They're at Purdue where they're very difficult to play. So I just think that – I think that – I'm not a better, and I would never give anybody advice. Mm-hmm. I just really felt like the Terps were going to play really well in that game yeah, last if night. If I told you this team was going to be – considering you knew how young they were going to be, if I told you this team after 25 games are going to be 19 and six, what would your reaction be? I, I know I the out, I know the out of conference schedule wasn't daunting, but considering yeah. that, well, I think I think what I like even better is the 10 and four. Uh, I think you know 10 and four in the Big Ten. Now, that to me, because the Big Ten has proven itself to be you know they don't have a necessarily a Duke in in the league you know or or, or even a Tennessee level team maybe, but they've got a they've got a lot of depth at the top and. To be ten and four in this situation is, you know, is fantastic. It's a real testament to to the way these guys have have grown together. Mm-hmm.